So if a tame imagination is like a visit to the zoo where you peer in at the images through the bars of a cage from like a safe distance from the outside peering in, a wild imagination, on the other hand, is like going on safari, an up-close and participatory immersion in the world of story and dream. And this video is about the three aspects of wild imagining that you can understand and apply to enhance your imaginative life. So the first aspect of wild imagining turns inside out the assumption of a tame imagination that images are only inside us, somehow personal and subjective. That imagination is a kind of psychological interiority quite separate from normal everyday life. A wild imagining emphasizes the activity of images, not just inside us when we close our eyes and dream, but also all around us in everyday life. As is happening right now, watching the video, which is really just a bunch of pixels on a screen, imagination adds to those pixels, fills in the gaps of information, and what do you see? Not a flat screen, but a three-dimensional place, a park. You imagine a park. What do you see? Not a dead, inert screen, but me, hopefully a living, breathing person. And what do you see? Not a static screen, a stationary screen, but movement and time passing by. Now, how we individually imagine a painting or a movie might not particularly matter, but how we imagine people, our friends, our family, our colleagues, our clients, how we imagine the world and our sense of belonging in that world really does matter. And wild imagination is all about attending to the significance of imagination as an act of perception in everyday life. So the second aspect of wild imagining is an emphasis on imaginative experience in and of itself, which might seem a bit of a no-brainer, a bit obvious. However, this is to distinguish it from a tame imagination and approaches that emphasize exactly that, trying to figure out what images mean. Approaches which aren't really interested in the images themselves so much as what the images point to. The images are merely symbols that we interpret, figure out, to find out the meaning elsewhere. Whereas in a wild imagination, the assumption is that the encounter with the images, the imaginative experience, like watching a movie or something, you don't need to know what the movie means. And you don't even need to know why you're enjoying the movie or why you're feeling a little bit depressed, a, bit, a little bit less depressed having watched the movie. Um, it's the encounter with the images and the language of images in and of itself that is healing and creative and transformative. And finally, the third aspect of wild imagination emphasizes an ecology of relations as opposed to a mechanical manipulation of images. So whereas a tame imagination often offers techniques or visualizations to produce some kind of predictable outcome or desired outcome. A wild imagination isn't so much about the destination but the journey itself. In other words, rather than emphasizing what we imagine and trying to control that or manipulate that, a wild imagination emphasizes the process of how we imagine and seeks to enhance the conditions that allow us to live an imaginative life in and of itself. So if you got this far, thanks for watching to the end, much appreciated. Um, do subscribe if you've not done so already, share, 
let me know how you get on in the comments, etc, etc. Also, there's the book that I've written, Waking Dreams. There's even a course based on the book. Information below. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.